When writing about mathematics, we often use mathematical or logical symbols in place of words. We should be cautious to not overdo it um, because oftentimes we can put too many symbols that even though they're mathematically precise, it can make it very confusing to read. And so instead, um, it's often better to use words instead of mathematical symbols when appropriate, right? Um, there's gonna be times where the symbol is just more precise, it's more exact, um, it's more brief than words can ever do. So use mathematical symbols in that setting. But if we can have the same amount of clarity with words, um, typically, I should say, if we can have the same amount of precision, the same amount of exactness with words over mathematical symbols, we often should use the words instead because it'll make it more clear. Uh, but oftentimes, words like in English can be ambiguous, and the uh, and the mathematical symbols then add a precision that words alone cannot do. So, good mathematical writing is finding the right balance between symbols and words. And so uh, in this video, I do want to mention one standard convention because, again, words versus symbols, it's not always it's, there's not always one right way to do it. But there is one absolute convention that I do want you to know about. And it's written here on the top of the screen in bold. Begin each sentence with a word, never a mathematical symbol. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, in English, grammatically speaking, sentences must begin with a capital letter. And if your first symbol is an A, like you say A is an element of some capital set A, you can't capitalize the symbol um, because if you did that, you would instead write A is inside of A, for which that entirely changes the meaning. When beforehand you're just like, oh, A is an element of the set A, you're using a lowercase element to describe the, a lowercase letter to describe the element of the capital letter set. If you were to capitalize the first letter, then you're like, A is inside of A. This is Russell's paradox. That's, boom. that totally changes the meaning. In mathematical context, symbols are case sensitive. A lowercase x means something different than an uppercase x. Like for our course, we often use lowercase letters for elements of sets and use capital letters for the sets themselves. So we can't just capitalize mathematical symbols. That changes their meanings. So that's one, that's one reason alone why we shouldn't start with mathematical symbols. But even if you're like, well, I'll just start off with a lowercase level letter, potentially I'm breaking laws of grammar. Um, but it also just improves the clarity um, to write every, to start every sentence with a word. And by all means, that word can sometimes be something like thus, comma. And that, thus, A is an element of A. That's okay. It doesn't have to be like a lengthy, a lengthy thesis that starts the sentence, but a single word can make a big difference. So let's look at a few examples here. So one sentence would be A is a subset of B. That's a reasonable mathematical sentence. But again, to avoid starting with a mathematical symbol, we could improve it by saying instead, uh, the set A is a subset of B. Um, it adds a little bit of clarity and uh, follows the convention right here. So the set is a subset of B. Another example, we have the sentence X is an integer. So 2X plus 5 is an integer. We don't want to start with the word X or the symbol X. We want to start with a word. Now with this one, we could be a little bit more clever with how we write it. Instead of saying X is an integer, so we could instead say that because x is an integer, 2x plus 5 is an integer, right? Notice what happens here. We had the word so versus the word because. Both of these words are suggesting some type of implication. This thing happened, and therefore this thing happened as a consequence, right? This, then that. Um, and the placement of the word so then suggests that this was the primary part of the sentence, and then this is the implication that follows. Now, conversely, if we move the word because into play here, we still have statement A implies B, but we've now shifted our words. This is now the main part of the sentence, and this is just support, um, putting that word in there at the very beginning. So just a changing of the phrasing. We didn't really even have to add any new words. We just slightly rephrased it to get um, not so that the symbol doesn't start the sentence anymore. Okay, so because X is an integer, 2X plus 5 is an integer also. That's a better way to say that sentence. 
And then as a last example here, um, x squared minus x plus two equals zero has two solutions. This is an equation. It's still mathematical symbols. We should not start the sentence that way. Capitalizing it doesn't make it any better, right? Because again, that changes the meaning. Capital X squared minus lowercase x plus two equals zero has two solutions. That's very, very, very different. So we can't capitalize to solve this. We don't want to start with mathematical symbols. Instead, we could say something like the equation x squared minus x plus two equals zero has two solutions. It might feel a little bit more wordy because you're adding more words there, but in the in the end, this stylistic change will make the math compose so much better uh, because we can start every sentence with, with words, not symbols, because if we didn't do that, we can easily get into traps like, okay, A is inside of A, uh, so that's a sentence, and then my next sentence is then, oh, B is inside of B, uh, and then our next sentence would be something like A is inside of A union B. Your sentences could just be mathematical symbols with no words whatsoever. It's like, ah, you know, that's that maybe that's the right thing to say, but we can then fix it like so, so, so that it does believe it make it it makes it compose a little bit better. Now, of course, starting with every sentence with the exact same can then get monotonous. You can, of course, replace it with things like thus. Um, but of course, more words help a lot. We don't want to have too many symbols. And that's why we start every sentence with at least one English word. And that's going to bring us to the end of our lecture 16 here. Thanks for watching. Um, if you liked these videos or learned anything from them, feel free to like them, share them with friends who might also want to learn from these videos. Subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this in the future. And of course, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them as soon as I can.